When you understand personality preferences, you can more readily appreciate the differences between you and the people who are closest to you, such as your spouses, maybe your partner, your children, your friends, even other family members. And in most areas of life, when differences between you and someone else are bothersome or frustrating, you can actually avoid them in some kind of way. But what if that person is your best friend? or maybe that first one's a loved one, a family member, or even your spouse. You'd have to do a lot or lose a lot to walk away from it. So knowledge of personality type allows us to see the differences as those, just as being different, not right or wrong, we're just all different. So instead of labeling someone or putting value judgments on their behavior, you can start to see that behavior reflects their personality type or their preference. And it's not really designed to offend you or frustrate you or make you angry. Many couples can learn to appreciate the differences and even can see them through a humorous light. When we look at the INTJ as partners or in their relationships, they're very loyal, but they're very independent. They can be almost scientific in choosing a mate and make devoted partners once they found a match that fits their rigorous list of requirements. They often have clear ideas about what makes a solid relationship or end very unwavering in their pursuit. INTJs also have a passion for self-improvement. And not only are they worried about themselves, but they want to encourage their partners to seek out intellectual pursuits. They, however, may not always see a need for some kind of frivolous affection or even romance because they feel that their devotion is evident. They're more focused on serving their partners with hard work and other ideas like problem solving than they are in showering them with attention. The INTJ's partner often can find them very difficult to read, and they do not show emotions very easily. They find the process of discussing emotions as too messy and most disorganized. They really enjoy solving difficult problems and are often out of their depth when you have something as unpredictable as a personal issue or emotions. They value their partner that it gives them the independence to achieve their goals and appreciates their efficacy, insight, and their ability to offer creative solutions to all of their problems. Remember that they believe in constant growth, and that means also within their relationships. They need independence, but they also are going to give independence to their mate and they're going to constantly look at and try to do fix-up projects because they want to improve the overall quality of their lives and those relationships. Remember that their commitments are very serious and they're always open to redefining the vows though and any kind of redefinition of how the relationship works, especially if they see that there needs to be an improvement. They're not very touchy-feely, and they're not overly affirming with mates and children. And at some times, it may seem like they're very insensitive or even avoid the emotional needs of others. However, remember that just because they don't show it, they still have emotions. They're very capable and intelligent, and they strive to be their best at all times. And they like to be moving in positive directions. They love goals, and they're going to even set them for their personal relationships. And they want to have a happy and healthy interaction with their friends and their families. Within their love and their marriage, they have some great strengths. They are self-confident and they take their relationships and commitments very seriously. They're generally very intelligent and capable of accomplishing many things. They're able to leave a relationship if it needs to be ended, although they're going to dwell on it in their minds for a while afterwards, looking for ways that they could have simplified or create a solution. They want to optimize their relationships and they're good listeners. I always remember too that they're not very threatened by conflict or criticism. For weaknesses, they don't tend to be very in tune with others' feelings and may be insensitive at times, even avoid them. They tend to respond to conflict with any kind of logic and reason rather than giving some kind of emotional support. They're not very good at expressing feelings and affections, and they have a tendency to believe that they're always right. 
They're also unwilling to accept blame at times, even avoid it. Their constant quest to improve everything can really be a taxing at some times on a relationship and especially a marriage. And at times they tend to almost retain or hold back a part of themselves. Within intimacy, they live much of their lives inside of their heads, and that goes along with that introverted side. They're constantly looking at the environment for ideas and theories, and then they're going to turn them into plans and structures. Sometimes what they see and understand intuitively within themselves is more pure and perfect than the reality of their relationship. And they may have a problem reconciliating their fantasy with the reality. They're not very in tune with their own feelings or what other people are feeling, and so they have a tendency to believe that they're always right. And that always goes along with that self-confidence that they have and that self-esteem, which people tend to find attractive. However, their lack of sensitivity to others can be a real problem if it causes them to inadvertently hurt somebody's feelings, especially their spouse. If this is a problem, they should always remember to let their mate be the one who is right sometimes and try to be aware of the emotional effect that their words have on them. Within conflict, the INTJs also need to remember to be supportive to their mate's emotional needs. Sexually, the INTJ thinks and loves thinking about intimacy and ways to make it perfect. And they're going to have creative and intense ways to shine through in this arena. However, in some negative relationships, they might enjoy thinking about sex more than really doing it. They are likely to approach intimacy more from a theoretical side and a creative perspective than an opportunity to really express love and affection. The INTJ has really learned the importance of these expressions to the health of their relationship and because that they're going to learn to be very touchy-feely in this aspect. They are able to leave relationships when they're over and get on with their lives, and especially if they believe it's the right thing to do. But they're going to have more difficulty accomplishing the task than they are to really exhibit it to other people. They're very intense and intelligent people who bring depth and insight into major areas of their lives. And in relationships, their greatest potential pitfall is the tendency to really think about things more often than they are going to do things. So they have a great difficulty in balancing and reconciling the differences between their fantasies and their inner visions of what's going to happen and the reality of what they're living in. However, they do tend to be very positive and within those positive and healthy relationships, they're likely to really love them and to excel and to really bound and be excited about life. The best kindred souls for the INTJ are going to be the ENFP, the ENTP, the ISTJ, INTP, and the ENTJ. So let's look at why we have chosen those kindred souls. So our natural attraction to people who share our dominant function, but who use it in different directions works very well for us. We not only flip flop that introverted or extroverted trait, but we're also going to flip flop the judging and perceiving trait. So in this way, the partner that we choose for ourselves is going to have a very different approach to dealing with the external world. But if we're laid back and indecisive, then generally our per partner is going to be structured and decisive. And if we're reserved, our partner is going to be outgoing. For all of our apparent differences, though, we do still have a common vision of what's really important in life, and that creates the foundation between these kindred souls. Although we really believe that this model is going to work well in finding and maintaining healthy relationships, it's important to remember that it's only a guideline just a guideline, just a guideline to help understand and to give some tools and some ideas of things that value in a relationship, but they're not meant to be followed strictly. So remember that any two well-developed individuals of any type can make a relationship work and work really work is the key problem here and the key concept because there's no such thing as an effortless relationship. So don't use these ideas as an excuse to really dump your relationship.